Hi, in this video of C language, we are going to cover error handling. Basically, whenever a developer writes a code, before the execution, he compiles it. During the compilation, the translation of the code occurs where the source code is translated into some lower level language. But if there is any syntactical error which is associated with your code, then the compiler will not be able to translate the complete code properly and as a result it shows some syntax error messages. So if it is a syntax error then you will not be able to execute your code and a developer has to write an error free code, a syntactical error free code in order to make it executable. But if your code is syntactically correct and maybe something is wrong during the execution because of that the, your program may get terminated. So here we are dealing with those errors which will be occurring at runtime and they are causing our program termination abnormally. So in error handling we will see like how can we stop our programs to be uh, terminated abnormally whenever there is any error at runtime. So we are going to deal with th those things here only. For that, we will be given the error.h header file which will contain few methods which will help us out in handling the error due to which our programs will not be terminated whenever there is any error at runtime. So as I said, like there are few methods, they may, represent, uh, they may return any error message, any error code which is associated with the individual error. So regarding that only, we have the method called p error and str error. During the execution, we will give a deeper look what these messages are all doing. But whenever we will be writing a code that like here is a sample code, we can use that. Like here you can see at the top, we have used the include, we have used the error dot uh, header file. And then here inside, we can uh, use the methods like p error and str error. Now, if there is any error, then your program will be terminated abnormally. If there is no error, then your program will be terminated normally. But anyhow, the execution will be ended. So, for telling that, we have some predefined macros called exit success and exit failure. Basically, you would have noticed like whenever I am writing a basic code in after, at the, inside the int main, at the end I am writing return 0. Because whenever we return a 0, the system thinks like it is a normal termination and there is nothing wrong with the implementation of this code. But when I return anything apart from 0, maybe minus 1, then maybe it is not a normal termination. That's what a system thinks. So for telling that thing only, either I can go for the 0 and minus 1 as a constant values or I can use these macros such as exit success and exit failure. So because of these two macros, you will get the same values like here. Exit, exit failure and here exit, exit success means if there is any error, if there is anything wrong with the code, then you can use exit failure by writing exit minus 1 inside the parenthesis it will do the same task but it will make your code look better because anyone can see like okay your code is uh, terminated because of failure or due to a success all right so let's see practically how can we start handling the errors which can occur at the execution time in your c programming here in this program of error handling you can see like first of all I have included the header file errno that is error number dot h which will give us the methods which will help us in handling the errors which will occur at runtime. Now inside this I am doing a very basic file handling operation that is using a file pointer I will try to open a file in a read binary or any particular mode and obviously I have not placed any file in the location so I'll get uh, the exception at runtime so for that what I'm doing is if pf that is the file pointer if it is null then I'll say that it is an error because here in C we don't have the blocks like try and catch which you may or may not heard in the other programming languages uh, but 
here we will deal with the errors in these ways only so what is done here like in if there is a null means if you didn't get any file then what will happen first of all you will get the error number so for that you can see like here we have errno as a variable visually provided by the errno.h and it will take the error number all the predefined errors in c are having the unique number for the specific errors so whatever the error is here like here you didn't get the file so for that particular purpose whatever the error number is there such as 2 that will get assigned to this error number variable so that we can read it further now after that I'll just print the messages like using fprintf formatted printf uh, function you can just specify the stream that is std err alright and uh, after that value of error number is whatever the number you are getting in this err no variable it is predefined so you can see nowhere in the program I have defined it now let's see about the p error as I said in the description earlier in the presentation like p error is a method which will first show the message which you have printed and after that separating with a colon and space the original the built-in message will be shown and the another way of showing the pre uh, means the internal message is using the fprintf again and here after the std error, std error stream I have just printed a message and after that using str error I will pass the error number inside it like this error number will be passed inside this str error function and on the basis of that error number this str error will print the string form of that particular error means the message which is predefined for that error so when I'll execute this you can see obviously I didn't get the file so the value of error number is 2 now after that when I used p error so error printing by p error no such file or directory alright so this is the predefined inbuilt error which p error prints every time after your given message and in the another way when I use std error so on the base of the error number I again got the same message after the message given by us that is error opening in this particular file alright so this is how you can start working with the error handling and whichever the code is there means when you are writing a code in whichever line you are you can assume like okay there may be some sort of error you can just plan and start writing the code which will help the end user during the execution to find like whether the execution is going in a correct direction or not